doing a quick garden update. Um, it's 83 degrees, low humidity today. And uh, let's see. I'm just, we did not water anything. We did get about almost an inch of rain uh, a couple nights ago. So don't forget to eat these guys when you pick them because they're quite delicious. Wood sorrel. Uh, everything looks pretty good though. I have a few, uh, these are the chestnuts that need to go in the ground. And uh, the last of my <laughs> my very late shallots. But we do have some eggplant that is just barely surviving the flea beetle onslaught, which is pretty common. This will just be a quick walkthrough. You can see that these uh, echinacea are not uh, drooping as much. Of course, it's not as hot, but it also... Uh, we put the straw down to try to cool these guys off. I, I did a post earlier on Facebook of the pine berries that are... Uh, these are so weird looking. But they're really... Uh, they taste like a, a really good strawberry. And as a bonus, they also... Uh, they're not red. So the, uh, the, the critters are not after them so far which is really great. Lori, what is the, uh, what is the, uh, the purple stuff called? Uh, she so. She so. I think that's right. S-H-I-S-O. Literally. Perilla? Perilla. Hmm. Thank you. So you can see the runners from the, uh, the pine berry. I just have, I don't know what happened to this guy. I just noticed him. Did you see this, Lori? Some kind of something funky happened. It may have gotten too dry. Anyway, so I have these runners. You can see. I'll just put them where I want them to go, and then they root. And this guy is actually really going nuts. I might later in the season um, cut those and put them into pots. Look at them all. They're really spreading pretty good. Look at these things. They're really. Uh, look. Look like how far these guys are going out here. Anyways, so you're harvesting berries. Mmm, yeah. exciting. There's a lot of strawberries too, but strawberries seem to get eaten by just about everything. These guys I always try to pull off of here because this will infect your berries, I do believe, with a funk. Mm. The pine berries. There's a pine berry over here too. I'm getting, I'm getting there. I'm okay. Getting there. Oh, that's so cool. Wait a minute. Okay, never mind. Look at the that pine guy. berries have red seeds. That's interesting. They. What's the uh, when you look at things, the pattern on things, and it makes you feel nauseous and sick? I can never think of the word. Uh, you know, like lotus uh, seed pods do that to people. Anyways, uh, that. So this is ripe. Yeah, these guys make me feel weird. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I think they're pretty neat. They are neat. They're super neat and they're delicious. And there's quite a few of them all through here. I think that's. This is the first uh, picking of these guys, so I really had no idea what to expect. Oh. Is that wild lettuce? Is that the one that like, oh. has the opiate like effects? Maybe. Does it bleed? Oh my god, it's white? hot. The sun is hot. Not that I'm looking for any opiate like so effects, red... obviously. That's a red strawberry. This is a pine berry. There's that creeping jenny. Oh, here's some pine berries right in here. Oh, yeah. It's so bright that I can't really see if... Uh... One. Oh, two. Evelyn's going to like these. We should... Wait. Is that ripe? Wait. Is there... Only one way to tell. When it turns redder, is it riper than the white? Is I don't that... know. I know nothing about these. This garden tour is turning into a... Berry tour. Oh man. It's good? Yeah. yeah look, they're like hairy. Yeah, they're funky. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Oh, num num num. So I feel like these should be getting a little bit more water. I watered them, yes. 
did. But I mean, well, they, they yeah. did get all that rain too. I just feel like. almost an inch of rain yesterday. Was that yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, remember you had to bring me shoes because. What in the, what was that? Regular strawberry, pine berry. I think so that's ripe. I think it is too. Oh, that's so weird. It is so weird, right? What's this little guy? I think he's it. Pull off those bottom leaves when you see them like that. Or, or snip them when they're looking crappy like that. So, all right. There's more pine berries over here too. We got a bunch of peat moss to incorporate into different beds. We have a very sandy soil here, and we're going to try to build that. Maybe I'll do a quick something on that one, too. Um, yeah, so this is a bed of things just coming up. This is a, this, this is mama pine berry right here. This is, where, this is where all the baby pine berry came from. And I had this in a cloth pot inside, overwintered. And uh, all the babies actually overwintered outside, and I covered them with straw, and they were in pots. Uh, so they're pretty hardy, which is a good thing. You can see the uh, the squirrel or the chipmunks. Somebody planted all of these uh, sunflowers everywhere, and they're coming up like crazy. Mint is going nuts as mint does. The bee balm is all coming in. Should be flowering before too, too long. And you see catnip behind that. These are Shasta daisies in the center right there. Uh, oh yeah, Lori's rose is over here. Quick update on that thing. I leave these guys when they come up, the violets, because in a survival situation, I would eat them. Or actually, I would eat them without a survival situation. They're good. So this is the rose, the bare root rose that uh, we planted. April. April. So do you let these? Are you gonna let these petals come off, and you're gonna go for the hips? You want the rose hips? They don't hips? make hips. They I don't. Nope. I didn't know that not every rose made rose hips, oh. and I thought, well, every rose makes rose hips. So even if it's not known for rose hips, I'll still get some. But it apparently does not. Hmm. I didn't know. I didn't so, know that either. Yeah, I'm gonna, we're going to have to get another rose for just for hips. Hmm. You know, I'll tell you what, I think oh pine berries God. versus strawberries, pine berries are the winner here because nothing is eating them. Because they're confused. You can see here, this is a nice Shasta daisy getting ready to. These are, are all from seed. Most everything I think we have oh, here is Eric. from seed. Sorry. Oh, the wow. The biggest one of that we've gotten. I always want to do like Sid, uh, the sloth, but apparently uh, he never in that movie says the last dandelion. So I wanted to say something like that. So yeah, I think that's a good idea. I mean, even it's even the. Uh, I can't see the strawberries. I would the even mint. I'd cut out the mint, cut out any bee balm that you need to. You know what I mean? Oh my God, it's I fine. This, this stuff uh, just, you this know, it kind of. That's, that's all mint. There's no lemon balm over here. Gotcha. So this is all ooh, like a mojito. Ooh. Whoa! Oh, wow, that's like a total. Oh, so oh maybe, do you see how maybe the mint is is a bonus around the strawberries? It actually is. All the strawberries I found. There's buried. one right here too. There's a really nice wow. one. Wow. All the ones that have been buried underneath something have done really well. Look at that. It's straight Where? in front of you. Straight down. I can't see it. Straight this behind that, lemon, that, that, that bee balm. Down. What? Oh. Right there. It's so hard to see. Wow. Yeah. Check that out. I wonder if there's any over here. Gotta be careful of the little Mr. Peppa. Could be Mrs. Pepper. I don't... I don't see any. Was it Mr. Salt and Mrs. Pepper? So yeah, all this netting was put up in the... Uh, oh, is this chamomile or dill? Where? Well, it's very tiny and it's all over here. What is this oh. little guy? So this is interesting. <laughs> it is a really cool little thing to notice that is it either the things don't... Like rodents... As far as I know, rodents don't like mint. So it could be that either it's in the mint or it's hidden. I, mean, I don't they know. Did, they did get some. They did get some of them? Yeah. 
We have a few rats that need a home, if you know anybody. This is a funky thing. You know what? I think we have powdery mildew right here. We have good powdery mildew weather. I don't know how it affects um, catnip. But I'm seeing this right here. This makes me think powdery mildew. It's kind of hitting this whole area right here. Yeah, Do you I have some? Let me see those real quick. The or, cat, um, was here. looking not great. It's still recording. Oh. Well, that definitely, to me, you know what, I'm going to take this whole piece out right here. See, it went back a good way. I don't know what that is, but hmm. anyways, okay, thank you. Quick. Noticed something earlier uh, in the week kind of affecting the, the margin here. So where do you want me to cut the mint away from? What do you mean? Like if I'm going to cut mint to use it, where... Oh, where from away, cut, any, away like, from anything. Any strawberry, any of those guys. Yep, the Shasta daisies are kind of competing a little more than I want them to. And I'm just cutting them right down to the bottom so they don't really have much to grow up from. Yeah, you see the sage is about done flowering. That was really cool. There are a few flower heads. Yeah, I have to cut that. Little buds coming up. Whew. Yeah, that direct sun is very, very hot. Okay, so before I finish the garden tour, or even start it, I suppose, I should... You can see the... Uh, the spinach is long gone. All right, a lot of these transplants, I transplanted these guys. These are, uh, I'm not really sure the name, I don't remember, but they get about six to eight feet tall, beautiful yellow flowers. This is the other half of the plant that went there. Boom, boom, here, what the heck. <laughs> there are a few, uh, Little turnips that actually survived the pigeon onslaught. This is funny. So all of these sunflowers that are planted, something comes through, digs them, eats them, and leaves a couple mm -hmm. little stragglers like that and goes mm -hmm. on. You can see the tulsi is finally <coughs> doing something. Uh, and then our tomatoes are they're really starting to take off, believe it or not. They were they had a rough, rough spring. Whew. I gotta get out of this heat. You can see the arugula flowering really nice. We had some of this as a garnish last night. And arugula flowers. Mm-hmm. They're delicious. You can see our uh, purslane bed is doing <laughs> great. <laughs> These are also edible. These are all mustards. Mustard greens, like a mix. And uh, we had that for dinner last night. I believe we're... Are we doing something with these tonight? With bok choy? Because they're all flowering uh, and... No, but we're going to do... Lentil rhubarb curry. Lentil rhubarb curry. That's pretty cool. So then the chard coming along. <laughs> this calendula needs to get away from these guys. So I'm going to have to dig that up. There's a little, nice little tree growing in here, of course. Whew. Yeah, I know. It gets sun pretty early on, though. These are the, uh, the seeds we're allowing to happen here with the uh, collards. So, what's that? Yeah, but it's it's pretty intense sun when it gets it. I, I don't know. We'll see. I'm sure it'll be fine. You can see the uh, the cilantro already starting to bolt. 
Let's, uh, uh, this variety bolts very easily, quickly, in any sort of heat. We have dill that came up. Um, this is kind of an interesting bed between the tomatoes and we have ground cherries that I think we're going to use to fill in below. Kind of see how that goes. Uh, I don't know. I have never really paid attention to it. This is lamb's quarters. This is a weed, and it's delicious. Tastes like the best spinach you've ever had. Uh, the mushrooms, the stropharia, are done for now. <laughs> the raspberries are coming along uh, pretty nice, and I don't know how well you can see in this light, but this thing these things are really loaded with, did I say strawberries? I meant raspberries, but a lot of raspberries. And you can see these are all growing on second year wood or second year growth. And you notice the first year growth over here, no berries. Second year, many, many, many berries. And once these things actually uh, fruit and we eat them, I'm going to cut them back substantially. And then I have these tea posts that I made out of scrap, this wood that we had laying around here. And I will use those to uh, pull these guys up out of the path. It's like our uh, damn lettuce is bolting. What a pisser. It was looking so good too. This guy is resisting a little bit, but this should be eaten once it starts, once your, your lettuce starts getting tall. Well, nah, it's bolting. It's going to flower. It turns a little more bitter at that point, so I'll go ahead and pull those later too. Okay. Other than that, we have a row of uh, romas, uh, tomatoes. These two eight-foot trellises are for San Marzano. And uh, I believe over here, these tomatoes in this bed are a, like a summer sunrise. Right here. And then I have lettuce planted around them self-seeded dill, some basil. I went on a basil planting spree. It was pretty fun. Over here we have kales and collards. Kales are looking a little dry, but you know, honestly, you want to see that. You want to get too much past that. Like, I want to water these guys, but I also want them to, you know, Grow a good root system, so uh, quick. What the hell was that? Anyways, <laughs> quick review of the uh, little nursery quote in here, and this, these are all the echinacea. These are these are um, okay, cool. These are the oof. There's water in there. There's all that rain. You don't want these guys to sit in water. Echinacea wants to be pretty dry. But, yeah, they're heavy. Oh well. But I gotta get the water out of the bottom of it anyway is what I'm concerned with. So these are reds and whites. I think there's some yellows in there. And, uh... Okay, Borage is looking pretty good. These over here are the purple echinacea. And apparently some other things. Huh. Anyways, that's uh, that's that. That's the tour today. Be sure to pop back in later.